Here we are again. Morning, chef. Morning. It's approaching afternoon and yeah. it's brunch time. I'm going to be honest, I'm not a massive fan of the concept of brunch. I prefer a lie-in and a lazy lunch, but that's just me. But I know, Barry, you love brunch. I do. Therefore, you've earned this. Kush, what's on the menu? Uh, we're we're going to start with hash browns, as you would not yes. have with, uh, and black pudding. Two Brilliant. of my favourite things from breakfast. Uh, we're then going to go for a eggs dish uh, with some kielbasa, smoked polar sausage and a chipotle oh, yes. hollandaise. Uh, then we're going uh, India for some onion pakora. Brilliant. Because Ooh. you eat onion pakoras with a mug of tea and you have tea at breakfast. So therefore, Sounds brunch. like one of my tenuous links, yeah. love it. Uh, then we're doing a fruit salad, stone fruits, uh, salted ricotta, fresh ricotta and lardo. And you've got a watermelon. And we're going for a dessert of uh, vodka, lime and vanilla watermelon. Excellent. Let's do this. Okay, so hash browns. What are we looking for? Soft, tender interior, hyper crunchy, crispy exterior. So I've got Kaufman potatoes here, famous three-star chef, owns his own potato company now. Uh, these are perfect for chips. I've grated it as if by magic. A high dry matter content, yep. low sugar content. Therefore, when it fries, you don't get too much color. You get oh, a nice okay. crisp without too much color. I'm going to be honest, this was a garnish on the a la carte uh, lamb course in Bath. So it, this is a Mission Star style Holy. potato piece that had other things on top of it and we're going more brunchy with it today. So we've got grated potato, salt and then herb oil. Really simply, thyme, garlic, rosemary, a singular bay leaf brought up to heat and whizzed, okay? So we're not looking for low decaramelization, just a light flavor. There's so much other flavor in this dish. Strain that into our potato. We're looking to massage the potato <laughs> to bring out some moisture and start to get the starch out the potato. Once you've massaged it enough, it'll be lovely and creamy and soft. Interesting, because so many of the kind of rosti elements, like squeeze the liquid through a tea towel to get rid of it, so you're working with dry matter. Yeah. Here you want that starchy creaminess. You want the starchy creaminess because the starch will bind the potato together as it cooks. This is gonna go into a lined bread loaf tin. So this is very similar to a potato terrine, like a boulangere, you could put bacon through this, you could put spices through this. Uh, there's a very famous 15 hour potato, yeah. which is layered potatoes. Same technique, the potato is gonna to stick together, but took seconds to grate, as you saw. You don't have to layer it up, yep. slap it all in. Suitable for doing, you know, the night before and baking. I'm gonna go. Paper over, both sides, dish on top, push down to a preheated oven, 160 degrees Celsius for about two hours. Two hours. Okay, yeah. right. Now this is a running theme on all of these Chef Unleashed, and that's basically mise en place, get ahead, so you're not mm. having to stress when it's actually the time. If you are doing brunch for friends or family, mm. you don't want to be stressing out in the morning. No. Once it's had its two hours, Test it with the blunt end of a spoon, the handle, because your teeth aren't that sharp. The Remember blunt end of a spoon, the, the handle. blunt end of a spoon, yeah, the, the handle. <laughs> okay, if right. you stab it with a sharp knife, it'll go through. So you won't actually see if the potato's cooked. Ah. When it's totally tender, comes out the oven, cool down to room temperature, put some cans on top of it and put it in the fridge, and then it turns into this. Oh, okay. This has been turned out, same process, bit more potato, and you've got a lovely not very block, solid very pressed potato. potato. We're going to cut this into fingers, batons and deep fry it. That's going to be the base of our dish. And we're going to deep fry it at about 180 degrees till it's golden brown. At that stage, you can take it out, put it on a tray and flash it through the oven later. So this can all be done ahead. While you cook those, we're nursing empty glasses. Yeah, what's Should that about? some fizz? To garnish our hash brown roshti chips, we're going to do a black pudding puree and some pickled radish and some lovely little apple blossom. What have we got? Well, I think brunch is associated with- A box fizz, wonderful. A little bit of booze. <laughs> For me, Prosecco can still be a little bit sweet, so this is Cremant. So it's oh, okay. French Cremant made exactly the same method as champagne, just not from the champagne region. Mm. Cremant de Limoux. Cheers. Cheers, chef. It is a Friday. Mm. Oh, that's bubbly. Next, the garnish for this, fantastic storm away black pudding. Ooh. And we're turning it into a puree or a ketchup. So we've got shallots cooked down in butter with star anise, one solitary bird's eye chili. So the spices in there are playing on the spices in the black pudding. Why is 
Is there no colour on those onions? So they're sweated, they're not caramelised. Right, okay. So I don't want to add colour and sweetness to the base of this because we're going in with gala apple. So we've got raw gala because it breaks down and comes really tender and it'll turn to mush because we're going to blend it. And it's got a lovely sweetness and actual apple flavour. But then we're going Granny Smith for garnish because it's crunchy, it doesn't discolour um, and it is quite acidic. And it doesn't have much flavour, but it's there for texture. I think this is where chefs get chefy because you've also named the type of potato, the Kaufman potato. Yeah. It's not just about a list of ingredients where all potatoes are the same, all apples are yeah. the same. Yeah. They're picked for specific yeah. reasons and therefore add to the dish. We've gone in with the apple and the black pudding. We're going to go straight in with brandy because it's brunch. Let's start drinking okay. with yeah. our food. Also, classic flavours. Can't beat brandy, apple, roasted dark meats, right? It looks quite wintry, but we're going to come back with some crispy, nice sharp elements later. And then double cream, because you need some more fat in of this course, dish. Of course right? you do, Kush is cooking. Kush is cooking, bring on the calories. Because I don't do brunch that often, if ever. It is I've a treat, said. it's definitely a treat. Once that's cooked down for about 40 minutes over a medium heat, <laughs> it turns to this absolutely delicious looking smush. Ooh. Okay, so Ooh. everything's broken down. That Including the tender. black pudding. Black pudding's broken down, it's dried out a bit. There's no more moisture in there. And then, all I've done is blend it. I saw you put that in there, I thought it was chocolate sauce. So, black pudding puree. Yep. I've kept it warm by putting it in a kettle that was just warm, yep. okay? Like a bain marie at home. Very chefy thing. And that's one of our garnishes. When you blended that, did you keep the star anise in? Did you actually blend the star anise in or did you pick out the whole spices? So, I took the whole pan and blended it with a touch of water and then passed it through a fine sieve just to get rid of any bits of oat or fibre, the star anise, chilli seeds, any bit of shallot skin that I'd got in there that hadn't cooked down. How long will that keep for? Well, if you cool it down straight away after blending it and then put it in the fridge three, or five, three to five days, mm. we've got some radishes that have been pickled with chilli again. So that's going to give us some acidity and some crunch. Got hazelnuts, classic bed partner with apples. Pork crackling because it's pig blood in the black pudding okay, yeah. and then more texture. And then we've got Granny Smith apple, the green one, that all I've done is cut it into little batons and put it in some cold water. That'll just stop any oxidisation and keep the colour. I'm going to drain that off so you don't want too much water. And then these are... What are you doing with the flowers? Uh, apple blossom. Beautiful. So they're not just for garnish, they have flavour. They have so much flavour, they're so acidic and tart. I thought you were just being a little pansy. Put on top. No, no I've got pansies later. That's for later. I've got pansies Very later, much. yeah. <laughs> just crispy on the outside. As they cool down slightly, they'll firm up. And you can see they've been in there for us about 10 minutes and they haven't overcolored. No, I am in awe of those hash browns. They're just, they're, they're, they're screaming at me. They're screaming at you. Okay, fine. We're gonna take, we're gonna take two, plate up while they're, like, while they're hot and we're gonna zigzag. Big blob of it on the side. Yeah. To dip in. Oh goodness, like churros. <laughs> 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 kind of like churros. Even though it is very chefy, every individual item is very accessible. That hash brown, I will do. Because I think it's easier the way I make it at home. Yep, just make it ahead. Yeah. As long as you've got a good blender to get a really good puree on the black pudding, everything else is really just about thinking and planning ahead. And that potato, turn it out, wrap it in some cling film, throw it in the freezer. And then whenever you want bougie brunch, straight out the freezer, get any excess ice off it into oil. You can obviously try and try and air fry, air fry the potato, but it's always going to be better. And if you put that much love into your potato, heat up a bit of oil or non-stick pan, yep. centimetre of oil, just and to keep on turning it over. Nice. And that is finished. Holy moly. Looks stunning. Michelin star. We always potatoes. say we have like the best job, but I think these particular these, yeah. videos are standout best. Cheers. Mm. You're right about the melt in the mouth middles, those potatoes. Mm. And almost yet crispy edges. Almost custody inside. Mm. What a start! And there's more to come! There's more to come. What second course of brunch? We'll call it the brunch bun. Okay. Right? Not a massive fan of Eggs Benedict. Why? Unless it's done exceptionally well. Yeah. We go. There are still better things to eat on a menu. Eggs Benedict is so popular because people are scared to make it at home because True. they always go True. mess up the hollandaise. Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to show a really hacky, probably not that traditional way of making a hollandaise that uh, served me well in restaurants doing breakfasts for 100 and it's pretty much foolproof. 
The secret is to overcook your sabillon. Which sounds wrong already, sounds but wrong bear already. with you. Yeah, so a uh, sabillon is the uh, whisking of egg yolks and normally a vinegar reduction. We'll yep. need to just use water yep. over a bain-marie, okay? Yeah. Yep. But what I do is add a bit more water than normal, which allows you to cook the egg yolks a bit further. So it's almost 50-50 egg yolk and water at this stage. At the stage, yeah, and as it cooks, it'll steam and the excess water will get driven off. Sorry, and the vinegar reduction is still in there? No vinegar reduction. I didn't see it. Okay, no, skipping cool. that. Don't I need, know, good, I never understood the vinegar reduction bit. No, 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 no. The vinegar reduction has its place okay. in a traditional hollandaise. We're making chipotle hollandaise. Okay, so, so we're going wise. with chipotle paste, okay? That's gonna go straight in. Big spoon, which has a touch of vinegar in it. Blend of seven different types of chilies, chipotle, which are smoked jalapenos, and that's gonna give a lovely flavor to the base. We're gonna cook the samuel out, pour in our standard clarified butter, but not too worried if some of the actual buttermilk goes in at the end. Sh shouldn't make a difference. And then we're gonna add this secret. Do you know what is it is? Sun, you, like sun-dried sun tomatoes? No, you, you tell me what it is while I whisk this. Yeah, sun-dried tomatoes. It's delicious tomato paste, chef. It is exactly just that. It's tomato paste cooked in a little oil till it's almost caramelized. So that's fully cooked out, fully stabilized. We'll take this water away. We'll bring another empty pan in with a cloth on it. This allows you to pour your butter and whisk. Yeah, it's cool. important. And it won't go all over the worktop. Yep. We're gonna go in with just a spoon of our caramelized, really sweet, lovely fruity tomato paste. And that'll give an even darker, richer red hue to it. And then we're gonna go in with our butter. And yes, we will start slow, just working it in to the cooked sabillon, like you would do with a mayonnaise. Yep. And once it's started to combine, we can speed it up a bit. Lime and chipotle, a nice touch. It would classically be just a, a vinegar and lemon. Yeah, so it's just holding. Nice. It's a beautifully thick, rich, smoky, slightly spicy. Butter sauce. Love it, love it. Oh, straight off the spoon, you filthy animal. So this is gonna go over fried eggs and sausage, the rest of our full English. So traditionally, eggs benedict would be ham or bacon, yep. smoked, but you're using a... I'm using smoked Polish kielbasa. Nice. Or kabanos. Uh, so you can eat this as it is, it's fully cooked and smoked. We're just gonna warm it through in a pan, get some of that smoky flavor out, and we're gonna fry our eggs in this and then build our bun. To build this, we've got some chipotle honey. Yep. That's gonna go over the sausages. Amazing. To mirror a bit of this, that, but give me a lovely sweetness to it. Uh, I'm going on a base with some Coney Island hot dog mustard. It's just fantastic base. It's got a bit of pickle through it, a bit of like pickled veg. It's a lovely base and it'll build on everything. And again, we've gone with chipotle paste, chipotle honey, uh, mustard out of a bottle. It's quite packet sausages. So all your, all your effort in this recipe has gone into the sauce. Everything else is just sourcing good ingredients. Yeah, pretty much. I'm gonna put the sausage on the bun, put a bit of honey over the top. That'll soften and almost melt into the sausage. I'll fry my eggs, a bit crispy on the bottom. I know people don't like it always crispy, but again, a bit more texture. So Italian cheese, Polish sausage, kind of Mexican it's hollandaise. A well the whole sandwich. thing is a French dish in the first place. This is gonna ruin sausage sandwiches for me forever, isn't it? The thing is, brunch began as a, an American concept, right? Back in uh, like 1890s. Was it? Okay. And it was literally designed as the pick-me-up for people who had a really heavy night. Which is why the Bloody Mary and the mimosa is a big part of that hair of the dog. And it was very American, a couple of years, and everyone said, this is a fad. This mm -hmm. is, brunch is mm -hmm. such a fad. And here we yeah. are a hundred and how many years later? And it's still a fad. <laughs> Something tells me it's caught hold. <laughs> Hot over easy egg on top. Oh, chef. Oh, wow. It's a dirty, smoky breakfast burger bun. Well done. Love it. Well done. Sexies, please. I'm gonna do it, Chef. I'm gonna cut mine in half. No, we're going no, for it. No, Barry doesn't. Filth. Come on, Barry. I wanna watch Barry eat his. Oh, he's got the yolk as well. Look at that. Mm. 
we might need a moment. Every layer is as satisfying as the next. Smoky, sweet, spicy, definitely rich. Still the crunch of the cabbage. Ticking every box, ticking all of my boxes. <laughs> Life is good. It's tickled my box. Sometimes these breakfast sandwiches can be excessive, unnecessary, but it feels like every bit of that sandwich is, is, is needed. And then you need a cold shower afterwards. Right, boys, while you gorge, I'm going to make some classic Indian pakoras that I will get shouted at so much in the comments, but bring it on. Why? This Why? is my. Okay, this is my version. It's mandolin or very finely sliced onion or hand chopped, a flour blend yep. with one or two spices in it, some curry leaves and some chilies and some hot oil. But this will anger people. So I've blended gram flour, rice flour, and plain flour together. Interesting. The plain flour gives you a little bit of lift and a crunch. The gram flour gives you flavour and colour, and the rice flour gives you that um, stays crispy, crispy vibe. Yeah. yeah, a real crispy crunch. Yeah. In there, there's also a bit of turmeric onion seeds to go with the onion and mustard seeds. And that's all it is. As a ratio of the three flowers, roughly? Equal. R wonderful. One, one, I one. love an equal <laughs> ratio. Makes life so easy. This is a white onion, lovely and sweet. You can do it with pink onion, red onion, brown onion. And what are you binding it with? The juice out of the onion mm. and a bit of vodka, because it's brunch. Just because it's brunch or because it also evaporates off it? <laughs> yes, it evaporates <laughs> off really quickly. Uh, we have it because I need it in the watermelon. And also, you can't guarantee how juicy your onions are. If you salt the onions, presumably you get loads of moisture out of them anyway. Exactly. So rather than making a separate batter yeah. and then pouring it in, the batter is made in the bowl. So dry onion, we add salt. It's so much simpler. And then live, as if by magic... The water appears. The water will appear. They'll go shiny, they'll go soft. And that... Oh, already, look. Look how shiny, look how, yeah. yeah? No oil in there, bit of massaging to break them all apart. I have wet hands. And enough moisture will come out to bind it together. And we'll just add the vodka for a bit more batter, which gives us a bit more crunch, okay? Nice. Chopped curry leaves, finely chopped green chili. But we're gonna eat this with a, a lot of yogurt and a tamarind sauce. So you've got sweet and fat, which will counter out the heat, okay? I'm guessing about three and a bit tablespoons. I want to get it nice and dry and really stuck together and then let it down with the vodka. I wasn't going to eat all this, but I've decided it might be one of the best sausage sandwiches I'll ever have, mm. so I don't want to stop. I, by cutting mine in half, I had a stop you point. I had a yeah. stop point, yeah. and I've had half, and I devoured it. It was delicious. I think it's what's interesting here is I wouldn't associate pakoras with a typical brunch menu, and yet, when you think about what a brunch menu should mm. do, Mm. give you really big, bold flavours to wake you up on the day. And ultimately, a lot of it tends to be quite fried food because, again, you're combating that heavy night yep. before with a kind of brightened brunch-lunch version. This ticks those boxes. A little bit of spice and a lot of wonderful fried food yep. that your body craves. So, into the oil. You want them to just hold together, but also give loads of lovely straggly bits. We have tamarind paste, lime juice, palm sugar. I'm going to stir that together. Not a traditional chutney by any means. It's not going to be overly sweet. I want it really acidic. Mm. Greek yogurt, as is. Salt, pepper, some chopped herbs. Not a classic Indian green chutney. Something just a bit lighter. I was going to plate up, and then I realised that these are starting to get to that oh, lovely look at that. caramel colour. Where that, you know, that the onion inside the batter is starting to colour, and you want to stop it there. Pakora's on. Loads of surface area to catch little drizzly bits. Not too much. You can always put this on the side. Every little mouthful to have a tiny bit of tamarind. And so you eat this with your hands and you get a bit messy. Just a bit of mizuna on top. Excellent. Brilliant. Let's get that one well in the 60s too. Ah, oh, put them down. Is this finger, food. finger food? Get in. Pakora. Get in. Yeah. Okay. Pick one up, smush it around. A little bit of yogurt, a little bit of tamarind. Cheers. All the textures, the sweetness of onion. Oh, wow. That's so much flavour. What's next, Chef? We're going to do a fruit salad. No, oh, that sounds a bit fresher. Yeah. So we've got to do a lovely stone fruit really early in the season, so they're quite firm. Pecans and almonds. We have some honey, some za'atar, ricotta, and ricotta. Ricotta salata. Ricotta salata. Oh, what a sous chef. 
and that'll bring a different dimension. So double dairy. And then we've also got... Lardo! Wow. Lardo. This stuff's incredible. Yeah. So we see this a lot. This yep. looks, looks right. like prosciutto. This is speck. Yep. It's a smoked Italian ham. But you can see the fat. Imagine all the fat on top of it is this. So it's a cured pork fat that you just eat and it melts. So there's some curing and there's some aging in the products, but are you cooking anything on this plate? No, I could get cushy bear out and blow torch all the fruit like I've done for star food before, uh, but there's no real need. Like, we already smell... Just for, cushy bear is what he's named it's his not, blow torch. It's not his penis. It's, it's not his penis. <laughs> 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 it's just to clarify. <laughs> So I'm trying to keep the shape of these apricots as natural as possible. Thank you, Chef. Here. Yeah, it winds me up. Yeah, <laughs> winds them up. Yeah. So this will work with um, plums later in the season. Yep. But you've got a different kind of sweetness. It's not as sharp. It's a bit more sugary. Uh, so maybe tone down the amount of honey you're putting on it. So I've prepared my fruit. I've already roasted my nuts. I'm going to go in with a bit of honey, a bit more olive oil to give it a little slick and a shine. And lovely. I've heard it's called zatter. Uh, dry thyme uh, and sesame mainly. Toss those together, add a nice bitterness to it with that thyme and sesame, the roasted nuts. And this is the texture on the plate. Again, none of this is complicated. You just, yeah. It's a really smart combination, an unexpected combination, which makes it feel chefy. Keep the natural shape of the fruit. Keep the natural look of the nuts, as long as it's in the centre. Uh. <laughs> yeah, scatter it about a bit. Yeah. Absolutely gorgeous. And we're just going to literally lay it on top so it folds naturally into its own ribbons. You don't need to do much. I know I've gone out and bought very expensive produce here, but tear up some standard prosciutto or parma ham that you can get in most convenience stores now in the UK and yeah. in large supermarkets abroad and do that. But is, is Lardo hard to get hold of? Lardo is one of those things you have to order online in the UK unless you've got a really good Italian deli just because it's not seen as widely as things like pancetta, because it's it is fat. pure fat, but it's pure magic on the palate. And then I'm gonna peel the ricotta, but I'm gonna do it on the board. Just shavings of? Just shavings, large ones, which I can then break up. And also, by doing it this way, it kind of disappears. Mm -hmm. So when you tuck in, you suddenly get these little bursts of, oh, what was that? Tom, what was that? Oh, what was that? And then your friends will have to ask you, and you'll look like a genius. That's never happened. <laughs> Pansies, like you said earlier, beautiful colour. Put them on top. Oxalis. It's a type of sorrel, butterfly sorrel. Okay, sorrel, okay. Yeah, yes. so extreme, punchy, bitter, lemon, citrusy, citrusy flavour. And it comes with these little free flowers again. And this does add a real impact. And the citrus note to it will cut through the fat and the lardo, but without having to squeeze the whole lemon over the top of it. And then a little drizzle of olive oil to finish, just to lubricate everything. <laughs> it needs more fat. Because I haven't dressed anything no, underneath no. the lardo. And that is my uh, seasonal salad. Lardo peach and cheese. Lard on a fruit salad. <laughs> Who'd have thought it? Cheers. Cheers. The herbiness from the nuts, the za'atar, as oh. well as the floralness from all of these little flowers, is wonderful. And what that lardo does is, it doesn't taste like ham. It, it's a fattiness that runs through everything, coats your mouth and brings out... Essence of pig. Essence of pig and the extra fruitiness from the peaches. It's incredible. You can do it without the lardo, as long as you add a salted element to the dish. Yeah. It's vegetarian. And you bounce between these wonderful sort of peaches to mm. apricot to mm. nut to crunch. And then you get to this little pocket of ricotta mm. on the bottom, which I kind of forgot was there. Yummy. We're going to end with a drink that we're going to eat. Excellent. So this used to be a little palate cleanser that I do for friends when they'd come and eat at restaurants that I've worked in. But rather than cutting a hole, inverting the bottle, That's what I was thinking and of, yeah. waiting, we're going to do it instantly with a uh, vacuum pack machine. Let's do this. Yeah. Okay, can't wait. So we've got lime juice, lime zest, a touch of vanilla. We're trying to balance the sweet and the savoury. Lime cordial. So fresh lime juice as well as cordial. Yep, just for you need a bit more volume, basically. Okay. And the sweet, sweet elements. Yeah. Okay. And then generic vodka. 
and some bruised shizo leaves. Oh, yeah, okay, right. Right? Oh. For flavour. I'm gonna rub, rub it together mm -hmm. and throw it in. Like clapping your mint. Like clapping your mint. And then we're gonna very finely cut some watermelon and put it in. I find myself peeling my watermelon. Okay. So I have a completely red ball. And then I find it really easy. You, you, you waste less that way. So uh, I'm gonna waste nothing. I'm gonna pickle the rind. Are you really? Yeah. Pickle and that'll go great on barbecue yeah. when it's actual summer. So, but I want just the red flesh for now. Nice small pieces of watermelon. It doesn't have to be overly, overly, overly neat. Uh, gonna just pick it up and submerge it in this liquor. And then I'm gonna put the whole bowl in the vacuum pack machine. Doesn't it go? What, so it's gonna boil? It's, it will boil technically, but water, uh, watermelon, if you punch it, yep. all the juice falls out. So it's got loads of little pockets in it of air, <laughs> essentially, right? It's yeah, not yeah. fully solid. No. So what it's gonna do is gonna pull the air out of the watermelon. Because it's submerged, when the vacuum goes back into the machine, the surrounding liquid will Close flow fit, fit into, into those it. cell walls. So what we've done there is to intensify the watermelon texture, firm it up, and force all that lovely liquor into it. Hey, and now we're gonna drain it off. Look at, look at them! It's almost become jelly. Wow! This can be done well in advance. Go to your local high-end restaurant, borrow their vacuum pack. <laughs> exactly, you know. exactly. Yeah. I'm not intending anyone to try this at home. No. But it's fun to watch. That's what Unleashed is all about. Lots of tips and tricks throughout, but a chance just to go, wow, and thank you. And then wow. for garnish, just a little bit of a frill of some shizo on the side. Oh, chef. And that is vodka and lime watermelon. <laughs> and then the chef's perks. <laughs> You get a watermelon infused cocktail for free. Now, if this isn't inviting, I don't know what is. So, it looks so simple. Cheers. If it turned up, I wouldn't expect much. I wouldn't expect that. Whoa! Such a unique texture. Oh. Crunchy. Fruity. Doesn't taste anything like watermelon. <laughs> Boozy. Oh, in the end, in the end it does. Yep. The shiso is good. I'm not getting vanilla. No, you're but right. I'm getting is roundness yeah. from that, which is so good. Yum, 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 Never yum, yum. Never has vodka be so moorish. Mm. You can do it with any any spirit, mm. obviously. You don't have to use a spirit in it. You can just do a flavoured syrup. Unlike everything else today, that's the first thing which a normal person cannot do at home without an incredible machine like that vacuum pack. But you can marinate yeah. watermelon quite a while in the fridge. I love that. Thank you. Well what done. a feast. As, I mean, fascinating. Some of these unleashed, we've had like three course meal. I lost, I lost count. I've, I've, I've lost the gift of my tongue as well. Because <laughs> there's been booze throughout. But that was absolutely spectacular. Comment down below which of those courses would be the one that you would absolutely order off of the menu. And comment down below if you want to see more Kush Unleashed. And I think everybody, including you watching at home, round of applause, Kush. Round of applause. Thank you. You might Take not like brunch, but we loved what you fed us for.